Just a disclaimer, there will be no pillow fights on this Q&A for all you ladies out there that got very turned on by us doing a pillow fight. Yes, and it's good that you mention turn on because when you see female wrestlers doing pillow fight, I'm sure the males got very excited to see that. Yes, I'm sure they did. Go down, back down. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is a Paul Heyman guy, MJ. And I'm a Paul Heyman girl, Mrs. Parkin. Thank you very much. We're the British Fist. Catching. Thank you very much for tuning in for this Q&A. And let me say one thing. As you can see, this is very similar to the shirt I wore last week. WWE seems to be getting lazier and lazier with shirt design. And that's a rant I could go on. But let's start showing this Q&A so I don't go on this rant about shirts. And what Q&A number is it, NJ? One, seven, four! Exactly. And you could, you know, you could always just go to Primark and get some... You know, shirts like this, which, are, classy, which are actually, parking. yeah, which are actually funny. Other than the ones you've got. What's the the voice of the voice of the voiceless? So this one was that's an old one. Stuart Allison. Do you, this is turning into NJ's uh, NJ shirt showcase. Which, if you want to see more of, go to his channel. Do you think the WWE Network will be a success when it comes to the UK? From everyone I spoke to, I think I'm the only one in Scotland who are really interested in it. Um, I must admit, I won't be buying it. The only reason I would is for NXT, and I just don't see... I mean, if you... I'm not really the kind of person right now who's really thinking about wrestling or really wants to watch too much wrestling. I've got a massive DVD collection, which right now is upstairs, but I never watch the DVDs. I never think to myself, hmm, I'll watch some wrestling, because quite frankly, I've gone off wrestling quite a lot. So if it, even when it comes to the UK... I'm not going to buy it. I mean, I don't know. Are you, you going to buy the network? I'm just, if Raw and SmackDown was on it, would you buy it? I don't know. You, your thoughts. I'm curious. This is a sad time I'm going to say this, because as you may know, people, I'm a hardcore WWF, WWE fan. The network was seen as a really big thing because of all the classic stuff it has, all the newer stuff we're getting. It's not working for me. There's probably a pay-per-view or two that I struggle to find on the internet, WWE. Yeah, exactly. And that's the only time I'd get the network so I can watch the pay-per-view I'm struggling to get. And that, no, I'm not going to be getting it. Also, if you go to WWE's YouTube page, they have quite a lot of old matches on there that you can go and watch for free anyway. But yeah, no, I'm not really very interested in it either. So. And I don't think it's going to work here as much. As the, yeah, it's the last probably part that the WWE need to stretch out to, but I don't think it's going to do much justice. Jack Johnson, do you think the WWE was too scared to have Cena end the streak, so instead they will make him be the one to beat the one in 21 and 1, therefore making him indirectly end the streak? Um, to be honest, going into SummerSlam, I knew Cena wasn't going to win, because what would have been the point in having you know, Brock Lesnar go through Big Show, then go end the streak, and then lose to John Cena? There was just, it would have made no sense. So I knew... John Cena was never going to beat Brock Lesnar. It just, and think about it, like, if Roman Reigns defeats Brock Lesnar, doesn't that mean that him indirectly ended the streak? And would you be pissed off about that? I sure as fuck wouldn't. So going to WrestleMania, we didn't all picture Brock Lesnar doing no. it, so it would have been probably Cena the year after. But now it's not. I think Cena beating Brock should not happen because Brock is the guy who... We want to see put over talent, not feed Cena more. Especially now he's in the last year of his contract. Unless they give him another one. But yes, <laughs> yes. Roman Reigns to be the one to do it. It would be a big match, big guy versus big guy, young guy versus older guy. And I think many fans would prefer Roman Reigns to do this, to claim Brock Lesnar's glory than Cena. Check that name out. Greeny awesome as fuck. I'm guessing you're a big Green Day fan because Awesome As Fuck was the name of their live album they recently did and Greeny kind of develops into Green Day. And I must admit, I am also a massive Green Day fan. So I don't know who you are, but you have a very, very good taste in music. I'm just saying. Do you think if WWE were to do a SummerSlam in Wembley Stadium nowadays, they could sell it out like they did in 92? I, I think they could. I mean, obviously, the, the WWE, to a degree, is still a draw in the UK because they don't really come very often. If they did a pay-per-view there, I'm sure they could, I'm sure they could, you know, get a good attendance. Whether they would sell it out or not, I don't know. But I'm sure they could get a good attendance there. This is a popular question for some of them or WrestleMania. And I think whatever they do, even if they give us a small pay-per-view, mm. it's going to sell out. It'll probably be the best sold-out pay-per-view of the smaller pay-per-views than they've had because of how... 
unlikely is for us to get a pay-per-view here. So I think give us SummerSlam in Wembley. I think it would be mad, crazy, and awesome. Give, me, give us a rebellion or an insurrection. I remember those days. <laughs> God damn, they were the best. If WWE did SummerSlam outdoors some year, where do you think would be the most suitable place to My have back it? garden. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's big enough. <laughs> I mean, no, no, actually, no. Screw your back garden. Very meadows. The allotment. The allotment down our area Not is perfect for that. You'd have to knock everything down. You'd have probably, to be a yeah, well, yeah, well, we've all the embankment. Yeah, the embankment wouldn't be a bad place to do it, but do it at the posh ground. And give, and give people something. Give us something. Yeah, give us something. We have nothing here. We just have a cathedral. Who gives a fuck about a cathedral? I'm just saying. But, you know, they, it would probably be somewhere in America. Uh, I don't really know because my knowledge of American stadiums isn't very a good. Desert. Well, I mean, yeah, if, if you want to, if you want to expand to African markets, I'm pretty sure the desert would have you. You'd have to do like running the ropes in the sand, and you know, the boots would be helpful there. But hey, you could bring back the Sandman. That'd be a good little gimmick. Ha ha ha! That wasn't funny. JP Payne, what are your thoughts on CM Punk if he is truly retired? Good question. Do you think he's one of the greats and he'll be a hall of a hell of gamer? I think that's meant to say hall of famer. Um, but, but yeah, that's a quite a good little snap. Um. He, I mean, it looks like he has done. Let's face it. I mean, he's, he's not coming back anytime soon. He's made that very obvious. He's not having anything to do with wrestling. He's going by his name, Phil Brooks, now. Will he be one of the greats? No, I don't think so. But he will be one of those characters that we do remember for like a two, three-year span in the WWE. The thing that surprises me is that even though it's been months on end now since CM Punk left and has done videos and uh, interviews of him saying he's done... The fans, WWE Universe, are still talking about him when I think it's set in stone that he's accomplished almost everything he wanted, apart from the fact that the streak's now been given to someone else and all these other new wrestlers are possibly not going to get to face him. But I don't think he's going to need to come back. There's no signs or agreement between him and the WWE. I mean, maybe on a short-term deal, if he wants to try and leech the WWE out of a bit of money, he probably thinks that... By retiring and coming back as a short-term guy, like a lot of these guys have done, he'll probably earn more fucking money that way. And he, he hasn't got... The only thing he didn't probably think about before he left, unless he's working somewhere else now, is that he didn't have, like, a fallback, like The Rock, or going to movies, as well as the WWE. CM Punk left the WWE and gone to work at a Burger King or McDonald's, I'm sure. I would definitely go there just to hear his pipe bombs. Same, yeah. Like, can I have a chips and burgers, please? No! Great pipe bomb. Suplex machine. Who does Bray Wyatt feud with next? Well, he's feuded... Okay, let's go. Wow. He's feuded with he Dan... He's feuded with CM Punk... Kane, then CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, and then Daniel Bryan, and then John Cena, and then Chris Jericho. You know, five of the bigger... Well, four of the bigger baby faces in the company right now. So who who can you possibly go from, from there? I mean, I'd say if Undertaker's streak was still intact, you could have had him feud with Undertaker at WrestleMania. Perhaps, maybe even with a sting at WrestleMania to give him that sort of legend victory. But you kind of have to go down now. You can't really do much else with Bray Wyatt at this point, can you? Yes. I think with the fact that it's over with the fans, it's possibly going to end up giving him a, a pointless face turn where he'll get the likes of Batista if he comes back, if he comes back, or to, if that happens. There's Triple H, obviously, that's just last minute resort, but there's all these. Heels that he could eventually go up against if he turns babyface. That's if the WWE think, oh, what should we do? Should we do? They do? could do. I mean, the crowd would love it, probably. I mean, he could act as some kind of basically be the same character he is now, but just he'll have the fans on his side and he'll be a babyface. So there are heels if they want to do that, if they want to start to switch his character a little bit, which right now I'm I'm hearing a lot of talk that his character is kind of really losing a lot of steam right now. So my pick right here, if we go with the face turn, because they've run out of ideas, is Brandy Orton, because the kind of characters between those two. There'll be some good interaction. Plus, he's a top guy, and, you know, a 13-time WWE champion would be someone good for him to feud with, keeping him on the up and up. Robert Hernandez. This is a good question. After Mania 31, who would you like to see come up from NXT to the main roster? Hmm... I think they're planning on Adrian Neville because he's the NXT champion, so they obviously see something in him and he'll probably lose the belt before WrestleMania to Sami Zayn and they'll bring Adrian Neville up. Oh, I don't know about bringing Adrian Neville up, though. William Regal. 
who's already the general manager. <laughs> they need new commentators so they could promote some of the fucking commentators. I mean, they've already got Renee Young doing some shows. and you know, Why not bring a new announcer team to SmackDown just to test it so Michael Cole doesn't have to do two shows in a row and then he's not... You know, imagine you're Michael Cole, you're doing pay-per-view, you're doing Raw, and then you're doing SmackDown. Three shows in a row. Imagine how fucking... Um, imagine how devastating that is sometimes, doing three shows in a row, or even two shows in a row where you're Many late nights, mate. And many late nights as well, especially in the WWE. But, I mean, Adrian Neville is one that comes to mind. Uh, Sami Zayn is another one, but I don't think they'll bring him up just yet. I mean, they're kind of similar. Kind of, they're kind of similar, Adrian Neville and Sami Zayn. Uh, that, what, what, why, are we, why are we so slow? The Ascension? Why are we taking the, so long? Uh, because the think- Ascension are kind of being brought up now because they've lost the Tag Team Championships and they're putting over Kenta. So they're going to be coming up to the main roster, I think, before WrestleMania. Oh, so that's why I didn't mention them in that sentence. Where do you see Bo Dallas? Uh, to be honest, right? To be honest, and I know I'm going to sound a bit like a hater here, but before I go on to the next question, I just want to say this. A lot of people in NXT are mid-carders. There's not very many main eventers. I mean, NXT is a great show, don't get me wrong, but a lot of them, to me, just scream like they're going to be mid-carders or tag team champions or, you know, IC champion. Maybe going to the main event a little bit. There are no, there's no one on NXT right now. I'm thinking, man, he could be the next big guy for WWE. Well, that's, that's just probably, the way it is. Well, the NXT main events have already left. They've got, they pushed mm. them out straight yeah. away. Shield, Wyatt, they've already Cesaro, they've already pushed them up NXT. Even NXT with the younger mid Kardash tone. Mm. That's a, that's a good point actually. I didn't really think of that, but you see what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like you look at Fatal Four Way. The main event was Sami Zayn, Ajo yes. Neville. Tyson Kidd and Tyler Breeze, and they all just look like guys that will be in the mid card to me. And that's the main event of NXT. You know, that's the top match. But anyway, where do you see Bo Dallas, Rusev, Adam Rose, and Paige by then? I mean, Paige is going to be a big fixture in the Divas division. Why not? She's been, she's got the AJ book in. She's gone through every Diva. She's going to have nothing to do by probably WrestleMania or after WrestleMania. She's just going to be another Diva there. I'm sorry. Page fans, but she's got the AJ booking. She's not going to any feuds. She's probably going to have one WrestleMania special match. I'm sorry. Adam Rose. Um, oh. He's not really going to be going, unless the bunny gets over. I think that, in which case, that kind of gets him over. No. Uh, Rusev. You know, he's getting built quite well. I mean, he's got wins. He's got wins over established WWE guys, you know, wins at pay per views. So he's on a good roll. They'll probably eventually feud him with Cena, and then he'll go from there to there. But right now, they're doing a great job in building him up and giving him win after win after win and making him look like this dominant foreign heel. I'm enjoying this, and I think with Rusev, I feel that they should be really careful with what they do with him, with the likelihood of Mark Henry saying that he's injured and retiring. Big Show, possibly in two years doing that. Kane, so they're going to need a guy like Rusev right. to be booked continuously well so he doesn't be dropped. I just hope he doesn't turn to the next Umaga, the guy that could really be really good in the main event scene but then was just dropped. I just, you know, I just hope that doesn't happen to Rusev. Bo Dallas, you know, when he first came on the scene, it was quite entertaining, but now he's what losing to Jack Swagger, and you know, what what is Bo Dallas doing? I just, when he lost the streak, I was hoping to see a frustrated heel, but the WWE didn't even give us that. He still did those promos that make us laugh, but it's not always going to give him the push if he's a comedy character. Very true. Rumor is, and this is a damn good question. I think we can have a good little argument here. <laughs> Rumor has it that Vince wants to wants at WrestleMania 31 Brock versus Brock and Triple H wants Brock versus Roman Reigns. This is very true. I, I have actually heard that Vince and Triple H are budding heads about this match at WrestleMania. Which would you rather see, or if you don't want to see them, explain? I'm not sure if this is going to be an argument because even but, though we could find mm. sides for both matches, I think we both agree that Brock versus Reigns is the most logical. Mm feud match going forward for the WWE. Yeah. I meant argument in the sense that, you know, we could you know, we could not not argue over which match, you know, would be better, but just make an argument in the comment section or with people. I mean, Rock versus Brock. I mean, in 2014-15, would you really want to see Rock versus Brock? I'm just saying, you know, you've got two part-timers who have no real bearing on the future of the company. Would you really want to see these two face off? I mean, maybe casual fans would think, oh, The Rock, oh, Brock Lesnar, two massive stars. Maybe that would get people watching, but I, I wouldn't. I just wouldn't. Well, recently I did a video about asking the YWC or internet fans if they Clever think video. that 
Rock should come back if you want to see him wrestle. And I defended him and went against him. I defended him saying it's a step up from SummerSlam. It's your top face in the WWF, WWE, as well as Cena, going against who's being booked as the top heel, Brock Lesnar. So you've got a huge top face, top heel match at WrestleMania, which is what WrestleMania should have as possibly the main event. Against it is Rock leaving he feels like he's frustrated that he lost to Cena he's got a big working movie career he's getting movie after movie after movie he yes called WWE home but to be honest I think that The Rock has accomplished the top of the WWE as of today so the only reason he has to come back is Brock or possibly Reigns I mean if they're going to bring The Rock back they're going to have to put him in a big match they can't just put him in a match against some scrub like a Daniel Bryan or something uh, but Rock, Brock versus Roman Reigns would have been the most logical match. Number one, it would be some kind of a draw, depending on how you build up Roman Reigns. Number two, you know, Brock Lesnar is going to have to drop the belt at WrestleMania unless he extends his contract. I mean, how much longer will we want a part-time champion? Number three, it would help build a new star, which WWE at this point desperately need to do. So it makes a lot of sense from that standpoint, in my opinion. I, I really, I think Brock versus Roman Reigns is definitely the way forward. Although at some point, I think John Cena is going to have to face Roman Reigns, and that's going to have to happen. Heisenberg717, hello again. I know it created a great WrestleMania match and moment, but do you think a young guy should have benefited from ending Ric Flair's career at WrestleMania? Maybe a Mr. Kennedy. Also, who should Bray White face at WrestleMania 30? I think, two very good questions. I think... Well, the thing is with Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels is the story required it. I think a big match like that, the story that they did with Ric Flair, you know, oh, if you lose a match, I'm going to fire you. You're going to end your career. I think the Shawn Michaels, having a big match like that with Shawn Michaels, called for it because there was plenty of story there. And you saw the way the match panned out. Would have Mr. Kennedy would have been able to extract that much emotion and get the audience that invested into that? That's something, in my opinion, only a guy like Shawn Michaels could have done. So I don't think a young guy would have benefited all that much from ending Ric Flair's career. I think it was just good the way it panned out because we wouldn't have had the same great WrestleMania moment, which, you know, Ric Flair's career ending was. If wrestling weren't script scripted, scripted. I, do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it could have been anyone's match. And I thought, sorry fans, old time like Ric Flair, a younger talent could have stole it. You beat the nature boy, you've ended the nature boy, go forward against main eventers. And Mr. Kennedy could have been that guy. No no denying that. But yes, like Mr. Parkin said, I think for the WrestleMania speciality and love and the friendship and the history of these two, it made perfect sense. Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 30? I've said. Uh, I think probably WrestleMania 31, actually, is probably what Heisenberg 717 meant. Um... At WrestleMania 30, you face John Cena. Now, I would have said Undertaker if the streak hadn't have ended. I think Bray Wyatt's character and Undertaker's character would have combined quite well, in my opinion. But I don't think you can really do that anymore. I don't think the Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt would actually draw now. The streak isn't really there. So who else do you have in face, really? My else? likes, like I said. I, in my Rock video, again, I mentioned that it's not what The Rock would do. But, you know, the, the chemistry... The, uh, the characters between Rock and Bray Wyatt would have been brilliant, but for the sake of this question, turning rain, uh, turning Bray face, going against Orton. Trey Top Dog Ellis, what are your top three changes you feel WWE needs to make to become a more interesting product to attract new fans? So there's three changes we need to make. What? Raw well, top three, three changes. Turn Raw, because obviously that's the frustrating yeah. thing. Fans who come into wrestling or want to watch it. They're going to feel the same way as Mr. Parkin and most majority of fans. Yeah, do. I mean, it's a it's a very delicate balance. It's the sense of you're getting more advertising revenue, but are you also losing viewers at the same time? I mean, the figures don't necessarily suggest that that is going on because this time last year the ratings were just as bad as they are this time this year. Uh, but yeah, three hours to two. I mean, even right now, if it went to two, I still wouldn't watch Raw. The biggest one, biggest one. You know, fans, you can almost read what I'm going to say. I think it's not emphasised so much on Cena. Yeah, I mean, th that, Sorry, that would that's help. The biggest, I, mean, that's the biggest one. I understand why WWE do it, but some new people at the top would definitely make things a lot more interesting. And just uh, just the reason why I stopped watching WWE, it, it was so boring. I, I, yeah, it was so boring. Uh, just the writing, like mm -hmm. you said, and the booking. 
not even necessarily the booking, but just the lack of interesting stuff that WWE does. Like, if you look at Raw right now, what interesting stuff Ambrose. is there, apart from Ambrose, Let's that go. makes you think, oh, I'm definitely going to tune in to WWE. Yeah, but what's Brock Lesnar doing that's really interesting other than showing up? Amen, then. What's he doing other than talking? But what, this, you see what I mean? What is going to interest me, a guy that hasn't watched WWE in quite some time, are you live on a Monday night or a Friday night? What is WWE going to do to interest me to come back? Because right now, I'm not hearing anything that I should really be interested in. I'm just saying, you know, I don't hear anything on the net. I don't hear anything on the internet. I don't hear anything on YouTube. All I hear is people moaning about the products. And if you're moaning, stop fucking watching. And that's a video you're going to see from NJ. Uh, yeah. And it's sad because we've named three things quickly. John Cena, um, the fact of the writing, yeah. and uh, stars. and Well, two to three, two to three, like you said. And it's a shame, but they're the three that stand out. And it's a shame, three to our war. Because we do want the WWE to stay strong in our hearts and our future. But right now, like we say on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook... It's not working anymore. No, it really isn't. Anyway, this Q&A has gone on quite a long way, but we've answered a lot of good questions, I feel, in this Q&A, so I think it's worth it. If you have any questions for us or any of the questions you feel believe will be of interest to us, put them in that comment section. That's the best place to it. That's the place I go to first to look at people's questions and put them on our Word document we have with our questions on it. So go there if you want to ask us any questions for us to answer. And people, we need to lighten this up because talking about how bad the WWE has become is depressing. So I'm going to say this. Thank you very much for watching, people. And please, please, please continue to support the British Fist. And I want to say this because WWE, please sort your shirts out because they're bland. Ow. They're not entertaining Ow. enough. And we need to get Ow. people to buy your product instead of Ow. leaving them in your store and not buying Ow. them. So thank you very much for watching Ow. and goodbye. Just stop now. <laughs>